Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit specials is provided by Cashfly at c a c h e f l y dot com. Hi, Scott Wilkinson here. We're in the DTS booth. I'm talking with Jeff Emmerich, a 50-year recording engineer veteran who uh, has many, many credits to his name. And uh, we're talking about DTS's new uh, technology called Headphone X, which is quite remarkable. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Now, um, Headphone X. Describe what it does. You're not a technical guy, but you're an engineer, a recording engineer, so you know sound. Well, the, the first time I heard it, I mean, first of all, it's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, That's saying something for yeah, somebody who's been around sound for 50 years. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not easily pleased, but when I first heard this, um, you know, you hear the, the demonstration and it's, it's played on, on the 11.1 you know, the, the speakers in all positions behind you, above your side of you. Uh, so it's like a glorified huge surround sound system, but then you hear it on the headphones, and when you, and, which is not they're not special headphones either; they're just regular headphones. Um, and then the, the, as soon as you start hearing it, you immediately reaction the, the immediate reaction is to take the headphones off because you're still thinking you're listening to the loudspeakers. That was certainly my first reaction. I, I started l taking the headphones off because I thought, oh, those the sound's still coming from the speakers. Yeah. No, but it's so. So I, I could not believe it when I first heard it, and uh, it, it's so spatial and big, and it's not necessarily loud, it's just huge. Um, and the, the applications, you know, the mind boggles, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I can't wait to try and actually record something, you know, it will have, have to be choreographed, you know, to do it specially, but for that system, because it's going to be just absolutely amazing, it really is. Now. You certainly know sound. I mean, you engineered um, Abbey Road and um, Revolver and Sgt. Pepper for the Beatles, and since then worked with just about every artist on the planet. Yes, yes, no, I have, yes, yes. And uh, so, and you've worked in some of the great studios of the world as well. Right, most of them. Yeah. So you really know, you really know sound, and you're saying to me that with all that experience and all that. Um, appreciation and discrimination for good quality sound you you can't wait to start mixing on this system no i can't it's 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 i mean hearing it for the first time it was like giving me what i you know the the, the fight through all those years to create what you hear live in a, in a manufactured replay system and it, it sounds as it sounds just 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 so great i mean that's all i can say i mean i'm just blown away with it you know um you said you just said that uh, re recreating a live concert environment. The, now, some recordings certainly strive to do that, wh whereas others are really meant to be manufactured. I mean, I'm, a couple of those Beatles albums really couldn't really be reproduced a in a live concert, right? No, no, they couldn't. I mean, you know, we had the instance, you know, when they tried to re reproduce some of the tracks from Revolver and couldn't do it, and then they decided when we were started the Sgt. Pepper album that, that we were going to create sounds that they knew they, they didn't have to produce on stage, so they stopped touring. So that's how Pepper was made, but Pepper was made with mono in mind, not stereo. I mean, the mono versions are the, the, the definitive versions, you know. So you mixed that in mono? Yeah, yeah. it was all mono up until some of the White Album, but then Abbey Road was recorded in for stereo because we were then on 8-track, and all those other albums were on 4-track. I remember that, that they were on, that you were recording on four track tapes and were you bouncing back and forth all the time to make sure, yeah. because you had more than four channels of music uh, that you were being recorded, right? Yeah, no, well, basically the basic rhythm track take, you know, we tried to put, basically put it onto one track and then, you know, if we went onto two tracks, then we knew we were going to do some overdubs, so then we do some overdubs on a third, third or fourth track and then bounce that down to two tracks of a second four track and then work, work that way. But most of the things were four to four. Some tracks went four to four to four to four, and there were some four to four to four, you know. But then that all ended up mono. Yeah. H how, I wonder <laughs> what you would do. I guess this uh, headphone X probably can expand mono or two channel into a larger number of channels. Uh, absolutely, I mean, if you think of the mo listening to the mono and you think I can expand the mono, that makes more sense to me than saying I'm gonna expand the stereo. 
Really? Why is that? I, it's just something I feel in, in my mind because you're knowing the way they, they, those, those things were created. They're one sound source, but you know, you sort of you go into them. There's no spatial thing there, but this system would actually create the spatial thing rather than pinpoint the, the stereo. Although there's pinpoint sounds, it's, it's, it's more it's more than pinpointing. I mean, I've I've only heard it a few times, but um, it's, so it's more than pinpointing because you've obviously got the the ambience and 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 halo effect of whatever's around those sounds. I mean, how it technically it's created, I've got no idea. I mean, I can't even begin to think how, how it's working and giving me all that information through my ears, you know? Now, it sounds to me like you don't object to taking uh, something mono or, or even stereo, maybe you do object to that, I, if I read you correctly, uh, and expanding that out to 5.1 or even 11.1 here. Uh, you, you don't have any problem with that? No, I, no, I, I had a problem with, with, uh, with uh, surround sound, you know, 5.1, because to get stock stuff off the shelf of famous albums and then try and you know, split up the harmony vocals left and right and behind me. It was a, totally the wrong way to sort of go. You had to now rec plan and choreograph and record new material for surround sound and orchestrate it for surround sound. To me, the big downside of it was to actually start, you know, taking stock albums off the shelves that have been hits and try and create stereo surround sound versions of them. Have you ever uh, mixed surround music, multi-channel music uh, from scratch? No, I haven't. No, no. Do you, do you uh, have a philosophical objection or you just haven't had the opportunity? I haven't had the opportunity. No. Something you'd like to try? Oh, sure. And especially with, with the, obviously with this. I mean, it, this, it, it's more than just surround sound, you know. It's unbelievable. Fantastic. Thanks so much for talking with us. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, we're in the Dish Network booth. I'm talking with Marcel Guajardo, the product manager here at Dish. And Marcel, Dish last year introduced the Hopper and the Joey. Give us a quick overview of that system before we get into what's new. Absolutely. You know, uh, Dish launched the Hopper Whole Home DVR last year. That was our revolutionary Whole Home DVR product. And uh, this year we're launching the next generation of that Hopper, the Hopper with Sling HD DVR. Now the, uh, the DVR is this box right here, larger box, has a couple terabytes of hard disk space, I think. And then that can be played on any of the smaller Joey clients located throughout the house, right? That's correct. The uh, Joeys are essentially just little thin client devices that network with the Hopper HD DVR. And uh, the Hopper does have a two terabyte uh, hard drive on it. That's still the largest in the pay TV industry today. Um, it's also uh, one of the fastest with uh, you know, state-of-the-art Broadcom chipset inside. Now, one thing new this year is that you can now network a couple of Hoppers together, right? Yes, we actually launched that with the, the first Hopper a little earlier in, in 2012, but uh, you can have, as a customer, you can have two Hoppers uh, in your home and uh, they would be networked together. So you can access the DVR library of either Hopper within your home. Fantastic. Now, this year, new to, to Hopper is the addition of the Sling uh, capability. Absolutely. So what we did is we took the Sling technology and we actually put it inside the Hopper. So this second generation Hopper with Sling now allows you to watch live and recorded TV channels anywhere you go. As so long as you have an internet connection, you can enjoy the same live TV and DVR recordings from home on your mobile device, PC, laptop. I mean, enjoy Monday Night Football when you're in that hotel on that business trip. So many people I know really love having Slingbox when they're on the go and on business trips and so on, and now you've incorporated it into what would be their primary home DVR. It's a great thing. Absolutely, and you know, in addition to having the Sling technology built in, uh, this is also the first pay TV set-top box to have Wi-Fi built in. Okay, so this, this Hopper with Sling HD DVR is wirelessly communicating with the wireless router in the home. And that also supports the, uh, the Sling features, uh, as well as some other great apps. Now, one of the features that was introduced last year that I want to make sure everybody understands is that you can set the Hopper to record prime time on all four major networks, everything, just all the time automatically, so you never miss, you never have to even say, oh, I want to make sure I catch the Big Bang Theory or whatever, it's always going to be there. Absolutely, and the prime time anytime feature uh, is actually a, has actually been a big favorite with uh, with Hopper subscribers. That's right. It's uh, you you enable it as a subscriber, and you automatically record all the great prime time shows every night on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox. So you don't have to set individual timers. 
Plus, you can you can also then set timers to record other things on other channels, even simultaneous with all of those. Well, one of the Hopper's secrets is that while it is recording the primetime, anytime feature, and it's recording those four local channels, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, you still have two other satellite tuners available. So, in essence, during primetime, you can record up to six HD shows at the same time with Hopper. Amazing. Now, also at the show this year are a couple of apps that you have uh, developed for use with the Hopper and uh, perhaps some other devices? Absolutely, you know, and as great as the Sling technology that is built in now with Hopper with Sling is, there are times when, you know what, you just don't have internet service available, you know. We've all had that opportunity where, you know, you wish you had uh, movies or content for your kids when you're on that long flight, and that's now possible. So we introduced this year the Hopper Transfers app. I think, I, sorry, I think you have it over here. Can we go take a look? We go, we go take a look. Let's go take a look. Absolutely. So I mentioned the Hopper Transfers app that's new with the Hopper with Sling. And what this is, is you download this, you download the app to your iPad. And now I can actually take my DVR recordings and I can transfer them so that they're stored locally now on my iPad. Right? I can be now on that flight. I don't have internet. It's not a problem because I'm not slinging anything. I actually have the DVR movie with me and it's on my iPad. So my kids can enjoy it now on the flight. So what I'm going to click on here, here's the, the Dish Hopper with Sling, the iOS app icon. Go ahead and launch it. What we're looking at right here on this screen, this is the My Recordings. This is, these are essentially the recordings that are stored on my Hopper with Sling DVR. And I can choose which ones I want to uh, go ahead and transfer and have available now for viewing. So, uh, so, so what we're seeing here is what's on the Hopper. And you can say, OK, I want... Uh, renovation realities to transfer onto my iPad so that I can take it on the plane. Correct. And so what we're looking at here on this screen, on this My Videos, these are the recordings that I've selected that I want now stored on my iPad locally. So I don't need Wi-Fi. I don't need internet connection. I can take this on the flight. I can be on the road trip and I'm, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't matter because I don't need, I don't need the internet. Fantastic. Now the other app that you've introduced here is called Dish Explorer. Correct. So Dish Explorer is an app that would be uh, used inside the home. So again, this could be on your iPad device, and the iPad could be used as a remote control. The iPad, when you launch the Dish Explorer app, uh, makes recommendations or shows. It's all about content discovery now. So I have this iPad now I can use as a remote control, and I've got my top shows on there that you know are it's personal, it's about me, it's about what I actually want to watch. There's also some social integration, so you know, I can look and see what are the, really the top rated things that are being viewed. Now, um, does it have a recommendation function? I know a lot of uh, source devices and so on have, you know, well, if they watch what you watch, and then they say, oh, well, if you watch that, then you might like this. It does, it does. And uh, again, it's all about content discovery, but on a personal level. For you, for the individual user, it's your app. It's the way you want to control and watch TV now. Fantastic. Thanks so much for talking with us. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. OK, we're in the Hisense booth, a name that most Americans might not know, but you will, because this is a big presence here at CES. I'm talking with David Gold, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Hisense Mexico. And uh, David, the Hisense is a Chinese company, actually quite big, much larger than I imagined. That's correct. Uh, we have over 60,000 employees worldwide. We are the fifth largest TV manufacturer in the world with a production capacity of more than 16 million units per year. Wow. And uh, whereas a lot of the major TV manufacturers are experiencing, uh, shall we say, financial troubles, Hisense is actually growing. That's correct. We've been the number one player in China for over eight years. This gives us a huge base upon which we can build and start exporting our products worldwide. And one of the core markets for us right now is USA. Thus your big presence here at CES. Absolutely. CES is a great opportunity for us to launch our brand. Uh, it's our way of uh, putting the pole on the ground and saying we're here and we want to expand in the US market. Now, one of the things that is so prevalent here at CES and also in the Hisense booth is Ultra HD. And you're certainly not alone in, in having Ultra HD. You're not even the only one with this huge 110-inch screen. Uh, what are your plans for bringing that into market? 
Well, our plans are primarily here at CES to show our capabilities. We want to show customers Hisense, even though we're a lesser known brand in the US, that we can produce any product uh, that meets all the specifications like any other tier one brand. Our goal for the US is to provide consumers with tier one products at a tier two pricing. Uh, and that's our way of growing in the US. And worldwide. Now, I, I was here yesterday and I was talking with somebody who said that you have several uh, sizes of Ultra HD, including this 110, an 84, 65, 58, and 50. And they told me pricing on the 65, 58, and 50, which I found hard to believe. Will you verify it for me? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot verify oh, that. Oh, you cannot verify it for me. Well, somebody here told me that the pricing was going to, they gave me some numbers and it was remarkable. Well, our idea, like I mentioned before, is we have to be competitive in pricing in order to introduce our products in the marketplace. Unfortunately, we can't demand the prices that some of our competitors can, uh, even though we can provide exactly the same type of products. So again, we need to be competitive uh, and we'll make uh, whatever efforts necessary in order to be so. Now, is this 110 inches that edge lit? Must be backlit. I believe it is backlit. Yeah. I mean, it would have to be at that size. That's correct. Now, what else is a uh, high sense show uh, introducing here at the show? I uh, I saw something called ULED, which is a technology demonstration. Uh, anything else you want to make sure we we know about in the coming year? Well, the ultra or sorry, the U the UHD is the ultra dimming. Uh, basically creating uh, greater levels of blackness into a TV. Uh, another thing we want to showcase is our smart capabilities, uh, both the smart TV as well as the connectivity between the smart TV and your mobile phone, your app, your pad, as well as the smart home, the connectivity between the TV, the refrigerator, and the air conditioner. We're one of the few companies in the world who can have that variety of products that can all interconnect with each other and provide for a customer a, a smart home solution. High sense is a name <clears throat> that we're all going to hear about much more in the future, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi, we're in the Stream TV Networks booth uh, talking about Ultra D glasses free 3D on 4K displays. I'm talking with CEO Walter Rulen of um, of Stream TV Networks, and uh, you're the brains behind this technology. Uh, I'm part of the brains. I have a complete team. I wouldn't, I would give them the credits. But uh, you're certainly you certainly got a technical background. I think I heard you say you've got a degree in physics. A degree in physics and mathematics. Yes, and I've been a professor at the Eindhoven University for more than 20 years. So tell us how you are achieving three dimension 3D TV without the use of glasses. What we do is we uh, have an optic system in front of a normal LCD comprising of layers with refractive and diffractive optics um, generating a light front. So uh, normally you use two views with stereo or multi-view with auto stereo. We don't do that. We generate a continuous light front and with that you can see 3D. It's a bit like a hologram. And also as you and I talked about uh, offline, a bit like in the, in the audio world, there's a technology called wavefront synthesis, which, uh, which combines tiny little so point sources of sound into one large wavefront. You're doing the same thing with light here. Exactly, that's what we're doing. Every subpixel, or even part of the subpixel, so the red component can be switched in two parts, for instance, we use as a light source. I have a, a light a wave coming out of that, and they interfere at the viewer's uh, plane. Ah, so you need to specify the distance at which you're watching this. The interference starts somewhere, that's, and that's in this case two, two and a half meter from the screen, but we can set that. In the software, we can have the optimal viewing distance set to a meter, two meter, or whatever. And uh, unlike uh, auto, other auto stereo, which have multiple views, uh, you have sort of a continuum here, so you don't really have to sit in this place or that place or that place. Exactly, that's the, one of the uh, advantages of this technology. There is no spot, no bad spots. Right. Yeah. In other words, the entire area is the sweet spot, as you will. Exactly, that's, and that's what we, what's what we aim for, because that is a, you don't want your wife to tell, you have to put the couch there because the TV is there. Right. <laughs> Fantastic, so is this a commercial product? Can we buy it? 
Uh, at the moment it's a technology that we uh, license to TV uh, manufacturers and the first one to bring this to the market is Hisense. It's the number one TV brand in China and the number seven in the USA. So it's a pretty big brand and uh, they are going to produce TVs with this technology in 2013. So you need to uh, basically equip a television with this optical layer that you were talking about, as well as I'm sure uh, firmware in, in hardware processor chips and so on. Yeah, there's our specially designed PCB with uh, chips uh, in the back of the TV doing the calculations to render each subpixel individually. Now, uh, this will accept a, a 3D signal coming from a Blu-ray player or broadcast source? Uh, even better than that, we can accept every stereo format from a Blu-ray player or, or whatever, from the net streaming or whatever. But we can also take in 2D and convert 2D in real time to 3D. Very impressive. This, this certainly seems to be the future of 3D in terms of no one likes to wear those glasses. No, that's what we thought, especially if you're already wearing glasses. As I am, it's, yeah. it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, that's what we thought. And you'll, you'll not, never have enough. You have a party and there's 20 people and they want to see the show, you uh, don't want to wear glasses. Right. And this has a pretty wide viewing angle, right? You can, you can see the 3D pretty far off axis. Yes, 60 degrees off axis, so the total viewing an angle is 120 degrees. Further than that, you can still see the, the image, but it tends to get 2D at that point. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Best of luck to you. Okay, thank you. I'm Father Robert Balasser, the Digital Jesuit host of Twyatt, this week in Enterprise Tech on the Twit Network. We're here at CES Unveiled 2013, and I'm standing next to Daniel DeVille from Your Buds. Uh, Daniel, uh, what's your claim to fame for these products? So for the last four years, we've been making earphones that are guaranteed never to fall out. Okay, okay, I've heard this before. I, I know it's a common claim, it's not going to fall out. Do you really mean to tell me you guarantee these are not going to fall out? There's a lot of people that say it, but we really mean it. So that's Kyle Mendoza right there. He's showing you just how well the Yearbuds ergonomics work. We have award-winning products that are set apart because we've designed them for the shape and the contour of the ear. Because of that, when they lock into place, we call it twist lock technology. Now the latest features that we'll have on the newest line, which is our limited edition in both a performance fit as well as a behind the ear version, it's gonna have both noise isolating as well as ambient aware options. Now, if you're an athlete, you wanna hear everything that's going on around you. So for the first time in the world, you get to do that, but then you can swap it out for noise isolation. And with that, you get to enjoy the best of sound quality out of our proprietary triple magnet drivers. Now, if people have watched my show, they know that I use earbuds as my, as my inner monitors because yes, they never fall out. But you're, you're touching on a drawback that a lot of people have had with some early versions of the earbuds, and that is, you know, with the design, because they screw into your ear, people have said either the sound isn't quite right or the isolation isn't quite right. By letting me choose, you're basically saying, look, whatever you're doing, if you're doing sports, you use this. If you're doing regular music listening, you use that. Exactly. What we've addressed is the perfect combination of both sport and leisure. Now, people know us for being able to allow in ambient noise, but our customers told us, we want more. We want to be able to use these as the only set of earphones in our kit. So we took that to heart and we actually created a product that really serves the needs of everybody who would be looking to use a Yearbud Sport earphone by providing best-in-class sound quality as well as the patented ergonomics you've come to expect from us at a new price point of only $99 with our lifetime warranty on the new limited edition. Now, let's let's back off the press kit for just a second because I'm 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 a am I'm a buyer. I mean I I know your buds. I use them. I I swear by them. But for a, for someone who's just looking at a maybe having earphones that can be used while he works out and can also be used as his his standard daily driver headphones. What do you think makes your buds special? Why would they choose your buds over say a cheap set of earbuds? Absolutely, and that's really what we've addressed with our, with many of our earlier products. We have value points that start at only twenty nine ninety nine. With those, every one of them, you're going to get a product that will never hurt your ear. Beyond that, you're going to get consistent sound because of the way that it locks in. A lot of people. They know they start chewing gum, and with an in-canal bud, you start chewing gum, and it's seeding its way out of your ear, and you get this weird occluding sound that's going on. All of our products are going to eliminate that right out of the bat. And because of that, we're still going to be featuring our neodymium drivers, which actually is going to give it a sound quality that puts it at least twice the price point of what you're doing with your earbuds earphones. Now, if people want to find out more about earbuds, 
of course, you're here. I believe you're probably going to be a digital experience, right? But where else can they find you? They can find us at yourbuds.com, Y-U-R-B-U-D-S. But I highly recommend you check us out on social media. We're a very social crew. We love to keep in touch with all of our people on Facebook and Twitter. Daniel, thank you very much for talking to us. Good show to you, and uh, we'll keep making the quality products that keep me listening. God bless. I'm Father Robert Balliser, the Digital Jesuit host of Twiat, This Week at Enterprise Tech on the Twit Network. We're here at CES 2013, CES Unveiled, and I'm standing next to Janice Aragon from Spare One. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for coming. Now, in my hand, I'm holding a cell phone that runs on a single battery. What is this? So this is the Spare One phone. It is the world's only phone that runs on one single AA battery. It's a small, very thin, very light phone, 0.75 grams, designed to be there for you to make that life-saving call, does not need a SIM card, can auto-dial 911 with that big red button right in front of you. It can, if you are out of battery, let's say Hurricane Sandy just happened. A lot of people without power for days. They had their cell phone. They were uh, displaced in a shelter. Take your SIM card out of your cell phone, put it in this phone, continue to send and receive calls. They were looking for power outlets. Again, you're, it, you're without power. It takes you two seconds to replace the AA battery versus standing there for four hours to try and charge up for only eight more hours. Ten hours of talk time on one battery. Lasts up to 15 years. Comes in waterproof packaging. Throw this in your glove box. It's a must-have modern-day emergency kit item, truly. Um, it's won the Tech for a Better World Innovation Award here at CES simply for its reaches in third world countries. Cell towers are abundant, power is not. So the fact that you can switch out the battery is very cool, besides what it can do for you in an emergency. What I like about this is a few weeks back, we had an episode of Twilight where we, we focused on what we'll call it the zombie apocalypse. What, what's the tech you would want to have in your bag when the zombies come to eat our brains? And the spare one was actually on the top of the list. People, people wanted uh, a cell phone that was, was basically, well, could be thrown into a bag, last for years, and then be t taken out just when you need it. Yes. Absolutely. That's the whole point. 15 years. So you don't know when the zombies are coming. They didn't come on the 12th or with the 21st, whenever they were supposed to come, but they could come next year. They can come in 15 years. So it's a GSM unlocked phone. It can work anywhere, anytime. What I like about this is you're very clear about what you're marketing this for. This is not supposed to replace your smartphone. It's not going to replace even a flip phone. It's designed for emergency use, and uh, it's it's priced accordingly, right? What are the price points on these? It's $99. We like to say here in the marketing world, this is the smartest dumb phone you'll ever get. A lot of the techies like to compare it to a smartphone. There's no comparison. You're not trying to tell you to replace it. You have insurance. You pay hundreds of dollars a year, a month for this is a one-time purchase. Maybe you'll hope to never, ever use, but when you do and when you need it, it's going to be there for you. Well, thank you very much for taking us through the world of the smart of the spare one, and uh, I definitely will have one for when the zombies attack. Okay. And now, if, if they want to find out more about the spare one, or if they want to find out more about well, you and what you do here, where should people go? They definitely should go to www.spareone.com. It has all the information that you need, even including zombies. Thank you very much, and you stay tuned or stay tapped, because we've got more coming from Twitch special coverage from CES 2013. I'm here at the Goal Zero booth, checking out some power products. If you watched Twilight a few weeks back, you know that I talked about Goal Zero because they've got some phenomenal power products. This one is, well, I'm going to let one of their own talk about it. I'm here with Scott Sorensen. Scott, what is this? So this is our Nomad series. They're super durable, durable solar panels. We kind of say, like, everyone else makes solar toys, we make solar gear. Okay, when you say durable, you mean what? I, I, I can tap it, I, I can scratch it. Exactly how durable is durable? Yeah, so first off, we've made unflexible solar panels flexible. And so you're able to bend these, move these, but this is what's even cooler. Throw them on the ground, and you can jump all over this thing, and she's going to keep giving you power. Okay, all right, I'll take that. I'll take that as durable. Now, power is good. It's good in, in case we do hit the zombie apocalypse to have something that will generate a little bit of power, but I need something to store that power in, and that's why I want to talk about this big boy. What is this? The, the Yeti. The Yeti. This is our uh, solar generator series. Okay, It's called a Yeti for a reason. It's big and it's quiet. This thing's completely silent, no gas, no fumes, 
And this thing can run your refrigerator. I mean, literally anything in your house. Want to keep that satellite going during the zombie apocalypse? You can do it. Oh, when we talked about the Yeti, we were, of course, talking about this one because this is the one we saw at CES last year. And the one issue we had with it was, yeah, it could basically run your house, but it also weighed quite a bit. You've got something up here that looks like a baby Yeti. What is this? So this is the little brother. We're unveiling it today here at CES Unveiled. And so this is the Yeti 150. Um, everything in the Yeti 1250 you loved in a smaller package. It's cuter. It's funner. Um, and it's perfect for communication. Okay, Laptops, tablets. This will run a tablet for a week. Run lights for 50 hours. So uh, that's kind of what we've done. Made it easy to carry, take with you. And like you said, smaller, more mobile, unlike the big dog that can roll around but packs a punch. What I like about Goal Zero is that you're sort of a, you're an outdoors company that got into power products. Now, now that you've seen a smaller Yeti, and now that we're seeing solar panels that are getting larger and more durable, where do you think you're going to be, say, in three years? Geez, that's a really good question. You know, solar has made leaps and bounds in the last 10 years. I mean, before it was just so expensive, and only the most extreme would use it ever, something like that. Now the solar is smaller, more portable, and you can use it in, you know, the park and things like that because we have so many electronic devices we want to stay connected. So I would say in the next three years, you're going to see solar get smaller and more efficient. All of our gear, we've designed it to charge your things up as fast as the wall, but you're going to see them get even smaller than they are today. I like that. As a geek, I'm a big fan of power. Now, if they want to find out more about Goal Zero, about the Yeti, about your solar panels, where should they go on the web? So GoalZero.com has some awesome videos. We've got some great coverage. We'll throw your video up there. We've got some good stuff. And so GoalZero.com is going to be your best source of information. And if they're wandering around the show, where could they find you? So shoot, you're going to make me think the booth right off the top of my head. I don't even know. Uh, we're in the South Hall on the third floor. Just look for the Goal Zero sign. For the Goal Zero sign, exactly. Scott, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, good show to you. And you stay tuned because we've got more from CES 2013. Dickie Rattel, the Gizwiz Mads Metastroider, and I have the, oh, whoa, whoa, sorry about that. I have, oh, I have the new Philips. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. I have the new Philips. What is this called? This is the Shockbox oh, by perfect. Philips. This is a, a durable, it's, it's a weather-coated. You've got a water-resistant. It's drop-resistant. keeps playing. It's good for around the pool. Uh, <laughs> you can also, it also has a motion sensor on it, so you can stop it. You can go next tracks. It skips right along with you. It's a speakerphone, so you can just swim right up to the pool and just start talking hands-free. It's really great. You can take it with you hiking. It's very durable. I enjoyed it a lot. It sounds great. Got lots of bass to it as well, and you get about uh, eight to ten hours out of playback with it as well. And the price and availability. It's 149. It's out now. You can find it at the Apple Store. And this guy over here is really interesting. Right here is a new uh, HTL 9100 by Philips. It's a Fidelio line, so it's a sound bar. It looks like your standard sound bar that you have here. We turn it on. So just like a, any standard sound bar that you have, but we can disconnect the speakers and they'll sync up here. And now you have a 5.1 speaker system, so you can mount these throughout your house. They're magnetically charged to the base. Uh, 30, uh, 30 feet range, 10 hours of charge on them. It's all wireless proprietary technology. Well, you know, there's a lot of bass. Where was the bass coming bass, from? You have this wireless sub here. It's just power only, so you don't have to worry about getting this connected to your sound bar or anything. Uh, it's the first of its kind ever with the wireless speakers. It won't interfere with other wireless networks or Bluetooth. It's completely proprietary. The speakers have a directional in them, so if you tilt them one way, it will redirect the audio so it sounds great in your home. And the price point on this has got to be up there. Yeah, if you want, since it's part of the Fidelio line, uh, if you want to go with the sound bar and the subwoofer, it's $7.99. It, we also have it with just the sound bar. It's $5.99, and, and it's due out in May. In May. Okay, thanks so much. That's thanks Phillips. Oh, you're welcome. The 5.1 system, very unique, and the uh, rugged boom box that we uh, demonstrated really takes a licking and keeps on playing. Something like that. We'll find more stuff. Hey, we're here at MyPal. We're talking to Monica. Monica, these are kind of unique little boxes here. It's called the Mini Boom. Yeah, well, this is actually the MyPal Boom. 
Oh, th that's the boom. The boom. And then this one little guy here is called the mini boom. And um, both are Bluetooth wireless speakers that work with any Bluetooth compatible smartphone, I'm laptop. Turn it up as you talk. Yeah, laptop, PC. Um, it streams your music, as you can see, wirelessly. And the sound quality is really quite amazing for the small size that it comes I'm going to put the mic down for this. Place I'm lucky, I know. That sounds really nice. Now, do you have a price point yet for these? Yeah, but these are going to range between $79 and $130 here in the U.S. They'll start to become available at the end of January at mypow.com. Okay, and over here, what do we have? Yes, well, uh, MyPow is really big on their power products. Um, we create, we actually have three different versions of our smart power accessories. The 2600 power tube, this is the 5500 power tube, and then we also have the 8000 power cube, and that's, the number corresponds with the milliamps that you get from that device. This one here can charge up to two devices at the same time. Even an iPad? Yes, an iPad as well. And the price point on those? Uh, they're going to range between 79 and 130 as well. And again, these will become available end of January at MyPow.com. Okay. Oh, very good. My, uh, M -I -P -O -W dot com. Okay, perfect. We'll walk on and find something else. Hey, you know what? I saw something really neat here. I'm an avid boater. Look at this beautiful life jacket. It's not a life jacket, Dick. No, 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 that's the iMusic body rhythm. It's a mas machine that allows you to feel the music with more pleasure and intensity. It's a massage, a massage device. Let me try it out on you. Oh, yeah, this sounds good. This sounds better than a life jacket. Well, it certainly is a lot more pleasant. You know, it's Bob Marley who once said that the good thing about music is that when it hits you, you feel no pain. With this one, you actually feel pleasure. Wow. Okay, so oh, it's, run by a it's run by a smartphone? So I just need to connect it. So you just start the application and then it will actually massage your neck according to the music that you choose. So you choose whatever. Let's show you. What's your favorite music? Can I choose Justin Bieber for you? Okay, let's choose some Justin Bieber for him. So it's just syncing now. And there we go. Here we go. The, so I'll put it on automatic rhythm. And here we have, oh, I'll just choose Gangnam because Gangnam is quite popular right now. I choose Gangnam, and now it's going to start massaging you. Okay, I can... Oh, I, okay. I feel it in my shoulders. But if you want, I can put it in manual mode, and then you can actually control the intensity right here. Yeah, yeah. I need more, I need you more need oomph. Yeah. yeah, okay, so let's have a... Do you have a, a vavoom control? Oh, 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 oh that, you know, I turned around, I thought someone was hitting, <laughs> having me on the shoulder. In fact, we have little miniature men hidden inside. Wow. Oh, that guy really is angry at me. <laughs> but you can control the intensity. Or alternatively, you can really go crazy and just put it in complete manual mode and go like this and just shake it like this and then feel the music as you go along. Okay, so the whole Only in my shoulders. Yeah. That is great. We've, we've, about three hours ago at 4.30, we launched it on Kickstarter as a Kickstarter project and already money started pouring in. What is most interesting is that we've actually made it into an open API so that any programmer can actually adapt and actually make the massage sequence progress to massage other parts of your body. So it's a complete open API that anybody can actually... Well, you would have to redesign the thing. To, uh, we can add as many uh, f layers of massage inside. I mean, these are just convertible device that you actually put inside in different places of the body. The only thing that we've avoided is the breast side, you know, because that's just a difficult area to massage. But you can basically massage anywhere. There's already a plan right now to make a completely wireless version to use in airplanes. Oh, okay. Now, if it's Kickstarter, it's not available yet? It's, well, it, the product is ready. The first version is ready. We've already started... Ma <laughs> so we started uh, manufacturing the first version and it will be available in the market by March, April this year at a price of uh, $169. The Kickstarter price is $69. We just want to actually bring in... The Kickstarter project is actually more there to actually bring new uh, designers to actually help us develop the application further. Because as soon as you open the application, you have this untold source of... Talent. Jumping in. And the website where you're at? It's already already available, and uh, you can log at. Um, so at iMusic. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. iMusicBodyRhythm.com. Okay. So, so. Uh, thank you very much, and thank I'll you. even give you this back.
Okay, we're gonna walk on and find more stuff. Hey, I'm at the Harmon booth and they, they have a product called AHA. I mean, is that stupid or <gasps> Twit AHA? Now I see why they named it. Hey, Robert, come on in here and tell us why am I seeing Twit on this device? Uh, well, this is actually a Porsche head unit. So for only eighty dollars to $120,000, you can buy the car that goes with it. And this is what you would get. And literally what you can do now is listen to your favorite podcast, like Twit, in your car the same way you listen to an AM FM radio station. So we, we've done is AHA is taken a cloud platform we've created for cars. We partnered with Porsche, Honda. Now we're announced today Chrysler, Ford, uh, Subaru, and Acura, and four other guys who are still remaining secret. And we're delivering them internet content that they can make available in their vehicles just as easy as AM and FM stations today. Now, the car companies that you signed today, uh, is that too late for it to be in 2013 models? Uh, no, we just announced today, but as of today, uh, people with Ford Sync systems can get our content, and the Chrysler system will launch soon, but in 2013. So these are all, we've actually been working with these guys for years. It's just they tend not to like to, they tend to like to do their own announcements and don't want to announce until it's really close to launch time. Okay, so actually there's, there's really no price we can talk about because it really will depend on what car you get and how it's... It, yeah, usually it's available maybe as part of an option package, different car guys, some guys it comes, it, how they package it will differ by manufacturer. The actual service itself though is free. There's no monthly fee and there's no ongoing purchase. You have to have a smartphone or iPhone or an Android phone, but once you connect that phone, then it uses the phone, pulls in the data, and optimizes it so again, it's just the same way you'd use AM or FM. Now, now is this system called the AHA, the Harman AHA? Uh, yeah, we call it the service AHA. So if you look here, if I go here on the radio, I've got AM, FM, satellite, and AHA. So I literally select it like another band on the radio dial. Okay. Just, now one of those stations is available on that new band on the radio dial. So just like in, I'd select an FM band, I select the AHA band. And now you guys are, you know, prominently one of those choices you could have within that band. It's actually going to really make the product move. Okay, Dick DiBartolo, Mez Mendes, Ryder, and the Gizwiz at the Digital Experience. Thank you. I'm at the uh, iOmega booth, and Bill here is going to tell us about two new products that they're introducing here. Bill? Hello. So, yeah, we've got two new products. This is the iX4300D, a new four-bay network-attached storage device. And then we have here the PX2300D, which is a performance two-bay uh, network storage device. You know, Intel Atom-based, you know, dual gigabit ports on the back. Again, performance versus the iX, which is more uh, smaller office, home office type of a solution. And, and Bill, are uh, any price points at, the, at this time? You know, we, we don't have really published price points, but roughly, because there's different SKUs or capacities, right? You could buy one here with four terabytes for around $699. This we actually offer diskless, and you can get a diskless version for just about $500. But again, if you want the drives to come with them, the prices go up a bit. Oh, they're great looking. Wait a minute. Hey, wait. You know, I thought I was at iOmega, and Bill, that says Lenovo. What's the deal? What's the deal? Yeah, we, we've had some changes, as you can see there. So iOmega has been an EMC company for about five years, and just a few days ago, really, end of last year, we became part of a joint venture between Lenovo and EMC. So now our, our name is Lenovo EMC. Nope. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. Hey, you're okay, welcome. thanks. thanks.